Right, more on me. Um, my girlfriend said to me, during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. <laughs> I had a relationship with a blind girl, which was rewarding but challenging. It took me ages to get our husband's voice right. <laughs> You didn't see that coming. <laughs> Neither did she. <laughs> Who picks up guide dog shit? <laughs> Some young women drink so much they black out and can't remember what happened the night before. If that's you, don't worry, love, I made a video. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, my granddad was an alcoholic. We used to call him Alco Pops. <laughs> I remember he used to press flowers. Well, I say that, he used to fall over a lot in the garden. <laughs> Have you all been to the cinema recently? Has everyone been to the cinema? See, there's an advert now in the cinema telling you not to buy pirate DVDs because it's not the real cinema experience. And then it goes on to say, because if you buy a pirate DVD, someone might get up in the middle of the film and go for a piss. And you think, yeah, that is annoying, but it's a lot like being in a cinema. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend bought me the Kama Sutra last year as a gift, which put me in a very awkward position. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a sex act that I don't fully understand. Are you all familiar with the 69, yes? No, I like the 69 as much as the next man. <laughs> Hoping he is a man, that would be terrible. I like the 69, but I don't, I don't really understand it because it's an incredibly intimate thing to do with another human being. But how does the 69 ever occur? It only ever happens when, when the, the man says to the woman, would you do that thing that I like? And the woman goes, yeah, all right, but only if you do that thing that I like. And the man goes, not a problem, away you go. And the woman says, no, because the last time I did the thing that you liked, you were a little bit sleepy afterwards. You fucked off to sleep. You said, we'll call it a 68. It's like a 69, but I owe you one. I like everything about the 69 apart from the view. <laughs> the perineum or taint. I like to call it the Amanda Holden. <laughs> because like Amanda Holden on Britain's Got Talent last year, it's the bit between the arsehole and the cunt. <laughs> Piers fucking Morgan. He's interviewing people now. When I said I wanted Piers Morgan to get Parkinson's, I didn't mean his fucking job. <laughs> You shaking your head at a Parkinson's joke. That's inappropriate. <laughs> right, let's try some rude stuff, see if we get along. <laughs> Lady wind. Queefing. Fanny farts. <laughs> the expulsion of air from the VJJ during sexual intercourse. <laughs> a cunt grunt. There are two main responses when a queef occurs. Some couples, it doesn't matter how gnarly or squelchy the noise, they deny the queef. <laughs> Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and they move on. Some couples, it's a funny little noise, they have a little giggle, they move on. Not a problem. I like to go a third way. I like to pretend the vagina is talking to me. <laughs> What's that? There's a boy trapped down a well. <laughs> I like to think of myself as the vagina whisperer. getting a phone call. There's a Scottish lady getting a phone call. I imagine the drugs are arriving any moment. <laughs> All right. You switched it off and it rang anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not buying that fucking story. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. It's only a phone. Don't feel bad. It's a what, sorry? It's a late alarm to come and see me. Or come and see me an hour fucking late. <laughs> You're not the one I booked for the interval, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Have you noticed this? It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Like in a long-term relationship, it's fine because you know where your boundaries are, you know your partner. But on a one-night stand, fraught with danger. I've got a story concerning a friend of mine. He's quite good at pulling. We were all at a party together and he pulled a girl that none of us knew. Ended up back at her place that night having sex. Well done him, high five. 
<laughs> so he told us the story the next day. He said, she started it. They were, they were having sex. She said, talk dirty to me. Or more accurately, talk dirty to me. <laughs> so from the roller decks of filth in his head, he came forth with this. And this would be fine for many of the ladies here. Within the confines of the bedroom, within the boudoir, this would be an okay thing to say. With a long-term, loving, trusting partner. On a one-night stand, maybe not. He said, you love it, you slut. <laughs> she said, I'm not a slut. And there was a very awkward moment. Awkward as moments can be when you've just insulted someone your balls deep in. <laughs> he apologized profusely, needless to say, and they moved on. <laughs> I imagine there's a story there, man. Well, you know how when you've got a phrase you're not meant to say, it's all you can think to say. It's on the tip of your tongue. So like two minutes later, right, my friend, he somehow lost track of what he wasn't meant to say. Says it again. <laughs> you love it, you slut. She said, I'm not a slut. And he got into an argument with her. He didn't mean to, it was like a reflex. When she said, I'm not a slut for the second time, he went, well, we have just met. <laughs> she said, you don't know me. He said, well, that just proves my point. <laughs> Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout, the couples. Oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think, uh, but for Valentine's, I've got my girlfriend's sex vouchers as her present. I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually, but, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? I'm 10 years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than 10 years? Yes. What's the longest we got in the room? 13. 13? 26. 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been, you've been together for 43 years? I think, come on, 43 years. Now, I obviously... I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> same? <laughs> Oh, you couldn't see that? He just went, yeah, same. <laughs> you look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> Dude, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... I hope. I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Shit, sorry. This, is, this will be hard for you to believe. I used to be a gentleman. I didn't used to talk about my sexual exploits, even with close friends. Never kiss and tell. Always just keep, you know, keep it private. It's private life for a reason. Private. Now, I'll talk about anything. It's great for me because it's a catharsis, but also I think it's good for everyone because you talk about things, everyone feels a bit more open and a bit more normal because, you know, there's weird things. Here's an example of an intimate detail I don't mind sharing with you. My girlfriend can't have orgasms during intercourse, but it's not a problem because I can. <laughs> I gave my girlfriend an orgasm and she spat it back in my face. <laughs> When my first girlfriend choked to death, it was a terrible blow. <laughs> I had to finish myself off. <laughs> there are inequalities between the sexes, and I think it's universally acknowledged men get an easier deal in our society than women. But I can think of an example where men get a very raw deal. 
You know, early on in a relationship, before you live together, when you're just kind of staying over each other's houses, very exciting phase in a relationship, in the history of the world, no man has ever been staying over at a girl's house and found a vibrator in her bedside drawer and there's been a problem. There is only one reaction on record and that is as follows. Oh, hello. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> what is she like? But when she finds a latex vagina in your sock drawer, <laughs> there is hell to pay. Explanations must be made. <laughs> I say sock drawer, it's actually the office. <laughs> I say latex vagina, it was the receptionist. <laughs> right, let's hear it from the, uh, the men of Birmingham. Give us a shout at the men. Yeah. Well, specifically, give me a shout at the heterosexual men of Birmingham. Yeah. Same voice is just a little bit lower because you've got. <laughs> Have you all, have you had the conversation, the pub conversation, the classic pub conversation, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Have you had that conversation? You had that conversation? You haven't had that conversation? I will save you the embarrassment, so I'll tell you what happens in that conversation. So you're in the pub with a mate, having a drink, talking about love and life, whatever. Out of nowhere, your mate goes, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. <laughs> but if you had to, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, well, puff. I got accused of being gay the other day. I was on stage doing a gig and I had a pink shirt on and someone accused me of being gay. I went, gay, it's a gay shirt, pink shirt, gay. I can't think of a more masculine colour for a shirt than a pink shirt. Because a pink shirt shows the world you don't know how to put a wash on. <laughs> what could be more masculine? I often get asked, what celebrities have you been with, have you, have you slept with? And I don't want to give it the big one, but it was years ago, so it probably doesn't matter if I say. Do you want to know? Yeah. Gary Glitter. <laughs> have any of you seen my impressions? Have you seen any of my impressions before? I don't do many. I do, I do a few. Um, I'll, I'll do one for you now. Um, are, there any, um, are there any lesbians in? Does anyone enjoy smashing pasties? <laughs> Are there any lesbians? There must be some lesbians, surely. What is there, a pool tournament on? <laughs> well, where are the lesbians? Are you up there somewhere? Oh, there's, there's some lesbians up there. Are there lesbians over here? Hello, girls, how are you? You all right? Very nice to have you in. The impression that I do, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression per se, but it's the... Um, hang on, the cameraman's coming to get the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression, but it's actually, it's, it's the breakup of a same-sex relationship between two women. And I think it captures the emotional turmoil and the anguish when love breaks down. When you still love that person, but you're no longer in love with that person, and you've got to go your separate ways. Would, would you like me to perform it for you now? Okay. Just give me, just give me a second here. What did you think was going to happen? I feel duty bound now. To, uh, what's your name, madam? Sh what? <laughs> Sharal. Sh okay, fine. Sharal. <laughs> sure, we'll go with Sharal. And who, who are you with? Who's, who's the other half? Rosie. Rosie. Hi. I feel duty bound to ask you the question I've asked every lesbian I've ever met. What would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> Oh, I've got a maybe, yes. <laughs> I'm two Bacardi breezers away. Come on. <laughs> I often get asked about heckles. That's a very common question for me. People want to know what's your favourite heckle, what's the worst heckle, that kind of thing. Um, I, I was doing a gig last year uh, on the Rapier Wit Tour, the, the last tour, and uh, I was doing a joke about the Paralympics. Now, when you're doing a joke about the Paralympics, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're setting up a piece of material like that that you're not fuck-witted 
disrespectful. So I was set, setting it up quite carefully. I'd got one sentence in. All I said was, my favourite event at the Paralympics. And this guy at the back of the room, quick as a fucking flash, went, cripple jump. <laughs> I wish I hadn't, but I fucking pissed myself. <laughs> the other one I loved. I was doing a gig last year in Cardiff. And uh, front and centre, this guy, front and centre, where you're sitting there, madam, out of nowhere, 20 minutes into the gig, he just went, dragon. <laughs> so there wasn't a massive pause before he said dragon. That was just to let you know what happened there. In my head, I had to go, whose court is that jacket? <laughs> to get it started in my head. But 20 minutes in, he just went, dragon. I went, what? He went, dragon. I went, yeah, but what do you want? He went, I'd like a joke about a dragon, please. <laughs> And he said it like I was the cunt for turning up in Wales without any dragon-based humour. <laughs> so in the, in the interval, I felt duty-bound to go and write a joke about a dragon. Do you want to hear my dragon joke? Yes. Okay. Two dragons walk into a pub. <laughs> Don't panic, John, it makes sense. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> 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 I'm just imagining a funeral court, you know, what do they call it when the funeral, when the, all the cars? Procession. procession, yeah, funeral procession with drum and bass. <laughs> <laughs> Has your hearse got blue lights underneath it? <laughs> Actually, that'd be quite good, that'd look like, like it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Two dragons walk into a bar, one says to the other, it's hot in here, the other one says, shut your mouth. <laughs> now I thought, well, we might do this evening, Birmingham. Obviously, you've all come out to see the show this evening. I'm very grateful for that. I love my job. I love the fact you come out to see me live. But we're all sort of friends here, and you've bought tickets to come and see me at the show. So I tend not to get heckled in the way that I used to get heckled when I used to play the clubs. When I used to play the clubs, you were unannounced. The, you know, the venue was bigger than, than the name, so people would come along, they wouldn't be invested. If they didn't like it, they would shout rude things out. I used to love that, proper aggressive heckling. I thought, well, why don't we? Because yeah, people tend not to do it at these kind of gigs because people don't want to fuck up the evening for themselves or for anyone else. <laughs> Hold your horses just one second. <laughs> People tend, one notable exception, people tend not to want to fuck the gig up. But I thought it's quite nice, it's quite a fun thing, heckles. So why don't we have a heckle amnesty, a little two, three minutes, where you can just fill your boots. If you've got something abusive to shout, have at it. <laughs> have you actually got Tourette's? That was, that was so quick. Can't fuck bum. And fuck bum, that's such a weird thing to shout, fuck bum. Like the rudest words you know. <laughs> Fuck, cunt bum. Any other heckles? <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> Peter K was sold out, so you had to come here. <laughs> yeah. Unlucky. I bet he wouldn't have called you a cunt. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not Peter K. <laughs> it's a very different kind of show. Peter's show is good too. Um, any other heckles? My crisps tasted rubbish. <laughs> oh. Oh no, you didn't. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> I became Latino there for a second. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I had crisps. Did you see? I had crisps. Jimmy Con Carney crisps. The good people are walkers for comic relief. They brought out a flavour of my crisps, and it was me and Al Murray and Frank Skinner and Stephen Fry. And then they made these crisps, and every packet they sold, they gave five pence to the starving people in Africa. And I said to them, why don't you just send them the fucking crisps? <laughs> it's got to make more sense, hasn't it? Because they can't be as fussy about the flavours. If you're starving, you're fine, aren't you? Well, these are a bit, nah, fair enough. <laughs> Any other heckles? When's the comedy on? When's the comedy on? <laughs> When's the comedy on? Really? What's your name, sir? Uh, I remember. What's your name? David. David? What's your favourite colour, David? 
Blue, okay. <laughs> Seems like the fairest way to deal with you, David. There are so many things I could say. Number between one and eight, David. Six. Six. Okay, and you said to me, when's the comedy on? <laughs> and well, it, says, it says, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> These things don't lie, David. These things don't lie. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. She swallowed the lot. <laughs> Any others? What, sorry? I've got, I've got a big nose. What are you, fucking retarded? I, I mean, I literally don't have a big nose. That's a weird... Ha that's like an insult you've heard someone else use. And you've gone, I've got a big fucking laugh. That's going to work best with a comic with a big nose. What's your name, sir? Thomas. What do you do, Thomas? You're a student. What are you studying? Uh, mathematics. Mathematics? <laughs> are you at school, Thomas? I don't know if we should continue this any further because it's starting to feel like grooming. <laughs> are you at school? Yeah, I'm at school. You got a big nose. I haven't. <laughs> Any other heckles? Oh, what was that? That sounded good. Go on, what was that? What was it? I'm a paedophile. I was just fucking chatting to him. I've done nothing. <laughs> Any others? Yes. Dad? <laughs> any, any other heckles? Peter. What, sorry? Posh prick. <laughs> Posh prick seems a bit harsh. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your name, sir? Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> and you think I might be a bit posh? All right, Miles, what's your favorite color? Blue, seems like the fairest way to deal with this. <laughs> B-L-U-E. Number between one and eight, Miles. Four. Four, all right. Ooh, it says if you've come as a cunt, you've won. <laughs> Bit of good news. <laughs> any more for any more? Who the fuck has a side party? <laughs> You're gonna kick yourself when I tell you. Me. 